Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, Pastor Esther here. We are continuing in our study of the book of 1 Peter. Today we are in 1 Peter chapter 4. We're reading from verse 7 all the way to 11. And this is what it says. It says, Now the end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and disciplined for prayer. Above all, maintain an intense love for each other, since love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Based on the gift each one has received, use it to serve others as good managers of the varied grace of God. If anyone speaks, it should be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, it should be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so um, I don't know about you, but I know for me, um, ever since I have been in the faith and growing up in church, I have always heard that the end is drawing near. And absolutely, I believe that it's true. I think with every passing day, with every passing moment, hour, minute, or second, the end of all time draws near. You know, over the last two years, we've seen many things come into play that um, coincide with scripturally what we've seen in regards to descriptors about the end of days and the beginning of the end of days. Now, of course, no one really knows what that timeline is like because it could be another 20 years another 40 years, or it could be another 100, 200, 300 years. The only person who knows is God. But what we know is that the end draws near because each day that passes moves us closer to the end. And we see here in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, that this same thought process is echoed by the apostle Peter. He says, now the end of all things is near, right? So knowing that the end is always drawing near what should be our attitude how should we behave what should be our response in the body of christ the first thing he says is be serious and disciplined for prayer i like how the amplified breaks this down it says therefore be sound minded and self-controlled for the purpose of prayer staying balanced and focused on the things of god so that your communication will be clear, reasonable, specific, and pleasing to him, him being God. So the first thing that we must take up in every passing moment, knowing that the end of all time is near, is that we need to be disciplined. We need to be of a sound mind. We need to exhibit self-controlled as it pertains to prayer. In other words, you and I need to be prayerful. And we need to pray in such a way that we are praying based on the truth of the word of God. When I think about being of a sound mind, I'm reminded of Paul's words through the Holy Spirit in um, 2 Timothy 1.7, where it says that um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. When we think about the end of times, it should not be that we are responding to it even in our prayers from a place of fear but we should be responding being balanced and focused on God and his truth and his word knowing that he will come through so this also means that as we pray our prayer should be balanced and focused on God it should be reasonable within the truth that we know from the word of God it should be specific and bring glory to God he goes on to say that we should have intense love for one another just because the end of times are coming does not mean how we love one another in the body of christ should wane but it should stay intense fervent like a fire that is burning ablaze why because love covers a multitude of sin the amplified says it overlooks unkindness and unselfishly seeks the best for others this should be the mark of a christian that Okay, maybe today I was not the best Christ follower that I could have been. 
But as I'm dealing with other believers, because their love for me is so intense, is so fervent and unfailing, that love overlooks my momentary indiscretion and my sin. That love speaks to me in truth. That love covers my sin. You know, Jesus said that the world will know that we are his and he truly came by how we love one another. With each passing day, our love for the brethren must stay consistent. And what are the ways we can love one another? We can be hospitable and do this without complaint. You know, I feel like in these days, hospitality is going out the door, but we need it now more than ever before. We need to build community. We need to love on one another. We need to go out of our way for one another. We need to help one another. We need to open up our homes and fellowship with one another and invite people in and be a blessing to others and allow people to be a blessing to us. And it says, without complaining <laughs> which when we think about everything that's going on around us and the strains of daily living it can be easy to fall into complaint but the bible urges us to not to do that and why can we do that because our trust and our confidence is in god he's our reward he sees our diligence and our faithfulness and he will reward accordingly he goes on to say that each one of us has received a special gift. If you ever thought that maybe I don't have a talent, no, God gives good gifts and God has given each one of us a gift or an ability and we are responsible to use it to serve one another. Our talent, our giftings, our abilities are to be used back within the body of Christ. God has given that to you and I to be a blessing to one another. It's He's given it for us to strengthen one another, for us to uphold one another. And this is why it is so important that one, we serve in our local body. It is not okay that we just sit down there and all we get is the message and we're in and out. We need to come back and serve the body of Christ because God has raised us up and given us giftings that are needed within the body of Christ. God has set you aside to be a blessing unto another brethren. Also, just the same way he has set aside another brethren to be a blessing unto you. It goes on to say that we should serve one another um, as good stewards. So how I steward, how I use and put into practice, how I manage God's gifting and talent in my life, a good way of doing that is actually using it in such a way where my fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord are blessed through the ability that God has given us. And it says of God's multifaceted grace. So this goes on to say that our giftings are diverse. You know, God does not run out of ideas um, and he's given us all different types of grace. We all have a grace for different things and the multifaceted grace that God has blessed each and every single individual is needed in the church. So I encourage you, serve. If you've been attending a church for a year, two years, you've gone through the discipleship class, their beginning classes, Find a ministry and serve and do so faithfully. And he goes on to say that as we are in this end time, these are all the ways we should stay consistent. We need to stay consistent. And when we speak, let's recognize that as we speak to God's people, we need to speak as people who are speaking um, from a place where God has given us words. In other words, we need to take what we do seriously. When we share, we should have a disciplined um, approach to this, knowing that God has given us words for his people. If we serve in whatever capacity is, we should not serve out of our own strength or our ability. So if you ever felt like, man, it's hard for me to serve for A, B, C, D, E, F reasons, um, we need to recognize that we don't serve from our own capability. We serve from God's strength that is endowed and made available to us. So when we do this, whether we are teachers, we are preachers, um, we lead a small group and we speak, we need to recognize that we are speaking as God's oracle. So that puts us in a place to do 
good diligence in studying the word and living a life that is backing up the words that we are speaking. And for those of us to serve, to serve knowing that God has given us the strength because he has called us to this. Because when we do all these things, God will be glorified. Mm -hmm.